Greetings, Star Ladder fans, and welcome back to European Coverage. We're here with Day 30, game number three of the day. We've got Virtus Poro, Ro, Ver, uh, Virtus Pro Polar. They're going up against Fnatic. This is another one of these matches that doesn't really matter that much, um, but it matters more for Fnatic than anyone else. Virtus Pro Polar, they're nice, uh, nice, nice in the middle there. You're not going to get relegated no matter what they do. Fnatic, now this is the team that inherited the roster of MYM, uh, as well as their record in the group stage. And once we get into the, the draft here, we'll take a look at the grid, but their record's not so hot. Bottom two slots in the Star Ladder, Star Series group stage of Europe automatically get relocated down to the, the lower series, and then the uh, 13th and 14th teams have to fight for their chance to stay in Star Ladder. So, eek, Fnatic, you don't want to get relegated here. No, no, no. Let's go in and see what's going on. All right, we've got Virtus Pro Polar, and oh boy, this looks pretty familiar. Magnus Medusa, the same thing we saw last game, and it worked pretty well. It was a solid opener, so uh, why not do it again? There's that saying about don't go break in what's not broken or fix in what's working something. They're not going to break or fix anything. They're going to do it the same, and last time it was awesome. The Magnus scandal getting out of control, Sky and even the puck, it's almost the exact same thing. DK Phobos, he'll Fanatics go off lane on the Fairy Dragon. Skywrath Mage, that'll be one of their supports, and I really hope it's Go Black Space Cow. I will be so disappointed if Fnatic bans out the Space Cow with their last and final ban. Now, let's take a look at the grid. Let's see what's going on here. Let's get down and dirty. Fnatic, 4-9. and nine. So they are right on the cusp. If they take a loss here, they've got two more games to go. If they take two more losses, they are in serious chance of relegation. Uh, after this, it will be Cleave versus Virtus Pro Ten Polar. So that'll remaining. sort of be a decider. If Cleave can take a win, they'll be in slightly better shape. Uh, but Five things a little bit scary remaining. for this, this Fnatic squad here. Now let's get back into it. Let's talk about this Fnatic draft a little bit. Exactly. The Bat Rider. So they've got the Shadow Demon and Ogre McGee. Oh, the Brawless Wonder going to be coming Fnatic out again. A hero that Hani likes ban. quite a bit. Probably in that position for we'll put Bat Rider in the off lane, and here we've got the Luna. She's gonna take Nova, probably to the safe lane, and uh, rack up the farm. They ban out the Wraith King, pick. Space Cow, final pick. I'm calling it. I know it's not that crazy. We saw it earlier, but come on, go black, don't let me down. Come on, Han, old buddy. We'll see. Fnatic, though, they need their mid hero, and boy, they have a lot of options at their disposal. I like the Viper ban. That's one hero that can absolutely just trash the Magnus. Uh, Brewmaster is available once more. Maybe something Fnatic will be looking to consider. Interesting that Virtus Pro Polar remaining. banned out the Anti Mage. Five Last time <laughs> they just wrecked him. It's just interesting that they're like a little nervous about the Anti Mage in the hands of Fnatic because last game they had absolutely no trouble locking that guy down. Uh, and they've got double silence now with the puck and the Skywrath. I guess you don't know that when you're going that ban. There it is! Woo! Fnatic. Sound the alarm. If I had a soundboard, we'd be doing the wah, wah. All right. Spirit Breaker. That's your Go Black Hero. And oh, man, it was so much fun last game. I am pumped. I am ready for some more charging around the map, some nether strikes. And how do you deal with the Spirit Breaker? They have some heroes this time to deal with them a bit better. Shadow Demon and Ogre, those are two of them. Anybody with a stun, a quick disable, can sort of stomp him dead in his tracks. Rubik, if you can catch him Ten coming in, you pick him up remaining. and you throw him away, and that's the end of Spirit Breaker's fun. Five seconds remaining. So they've got McGee, they've got the Shadow Demon. That will make uh, Spirit Breaker's life a little bit Reserve more difficult, time. but I think he'll still have an okay time. Uh, it's really now a matter of what Fnatic want to do in the mid. For some reason, Brewmaster is just jumping out at me. Uh, I know how much Hani likes his Magnus. He didn't ban it out here. It'll be sad that the VP Polar got it. Uh, got it in his stead. Come on, Fnatic. What are you going to do? Who else would work well here? Who's good against Magnus? Too bad they can't pick Viper. That really would have been perfect. DP would have been great also. First Rose banned out really a lot of the scary mid heroes. That could really give them a run for their money. Uh, Fnatic have now banned out the Silencer, and okay, they will take the Beastmaster. Hmm, how are Fnatic going to lane this one? Arise will take the Beastmaster, and he tends to go solo mid. Now, this Fnatic roster is a little bit different. Again, it's Hani plus the old MYM, so we don't really know exactly how they have their lanes settled down, and while you're in this state of flux, it's a little bit hard to guess who's going to be going to which lane, especially when you have a spread of heroes like this. I'm going to guess it's a Beastmaster mid, safe lane try with uh, the Nova Rider, and uh, you've got the Bat Rider. He's going to head towards the off lane. 
I have to say, I think this Virtus Pro draft is a bit scarier. We've seen what DK Phobos can do in the offlane with the puck. We've seen what Illidan can do with Dusa. Seen what Scandal can do with Magnus and even Go Black on the Spirit Breaker. These are the heroes that Virtus Pro Polar are most Ten comfortable with. Remaining. They feel good. This is what they wanted. And maybe at face value, it's like, oh, this is kind of an awkward remaining. draft, but they know how to run this. They know what they're doing, and they're going to do it. So, oh boy, more pauses. The curse of Coddle Guy continues. Now, they, they should have done a, an Are You Afraid of the Dark about the curse of Coddle Guy. That's a good idea for a YouTube short. Oh, man, I shouldn't have said it out loud. Well, gosh darn it, I just spoiled my own good idea. Beastmaster's in an interesting place right now. Oh, he's got the hood. Oh, we've got the Rocky Beastmaster. It's like the uh, the anti-mage hood, the the Red Talon hood. Mm, red, red Talon. That's an interesting looking set. Ooh, let's see what Luna said. Is it okay? Oh, it's the the nice one. She's got the Lucent Tear Legendary mount. That's good. That's that's nice. That's a nice. That's a nice one. She's got the liveliness of the Lucent Tear Kinetic Gem. That's that's all good stuff. All right, we're gonna get into it here. Woo. So Beastmaster's in kind of a weird spot. His ultimate is pretty powerful. We see him mostly in like the kind of position four or in the off lane. Uh, we haven't seen many teams running him in the mid, though it is viable. Though, will they actually do that? Are they going to send a Bat Rider mid? No. Well, we'll just be patient and figure it out. All right, let's look at BP Polar. We know what they're doing. This is the team, the favorites. They're hot off their 14-minute win over the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. DK Phobos. He's taking the off lane with that million dollar dream coil hat. Oh my gosh, it's so mythical. He's going to be in the off lane here in the mid. It will be Scandal on the Magnus once more. Go Black. He takes his Spirit Breaker. Going to give him the lantern. Yep. Uh, we've got Lil. He was on the Venge last game, I want to say. Uh, now he's going to be on the Sky Wrath Mage. Still a nice roaming support. We'll see what he can get done. And Illidan. He had a great time in the last match. Completely wrecked that Doom. We'll see if he can do it again, but he'll have his work cut out for him. As well. Oh, look at this. Big fatty ogre. He's setting the trap. He's going to hide in the tree line here and look to drop the fireballs to get things started. Ooh, battle for the first rune coming out in about 20 seconds. So, Fnatic, it looks like it will be a rise headed mid on the Beastmaster. Gets those wild axes leveled up. Now doing the physical damage that goes through spell immunity. Come with me. And he's going to be on the Shadow Demon down bottom. Hani will be on the Farming Luna in the position one. Looks like it will be a 2-1-2 coming out of the Fnatic, as Blitz begins. told us earlier. Kind of becoming the new standard in this meta. It will be Ace in the offlane on the Bat Rider. He'll be joined by Rise here on McGee. Who will be helping him out uh, in the off lane? DK Phobos will camp out the first room, grabs the illusion, has come with me, is on his way in to try and interrupt it and uh, bring some hurt. But uh oh, uh oh, will they find Rise? No, he's tucked in the cubby. They walk right by him and they don't see him. Oh, man. This sneaky ogre. Whoever thought an ogre so big could be so sneaky? Well, I guess certainly v Virtus Pro Polar never thought so. So the Bat Rider should have an okay time in the off lane, but already Go Black, let's go to the Go Black cam. He's cruising on in. He's going. He's going. He's running a marathon. He's going to go right onto the Bat Rider. The charge will connect. Will this be a first blood? I don't know that they'll have enough damage to stun a pretty short duration in the first levels, but Go Black, he's going to man up, and first blood is drawn. It's Lil on the Sky Wrath that gets credit for the kill. Ryze coming in. Fire blast onto Go Black. Tower shots helping out the Space Cow. He'll take a tumble, and it's Ryze that gets credit for that one. They make it a one for one, but Virtus Pro Polar getting the obvious advantage. As the first blood is drawn, and Illidan Storm Rage, he gets himself a little little penny there, putting in the bank. As this deuce is off to a pretty damn good start. The power of the Go Black, ladies and gentlemen. Look, he's at it again. He's already charging up. Where's he going? Oh, he wants rise. He wants some vengeance on this ogre. He wants it. This is going to be a little tricky, though. Ogre, not the kind of hero you want to man up on. And yeah, Go Black just using it to get back to the lane. And it will be a safe lane try for VP. DK Phobos, how's he doing in the off lane? Uh, not so bad against Hani, but not so great. Not quite like that anti-mage matchup where he was able just to zone people out like crazy in the last game. So it should be a fairly even farm exchange. The pull camp should be available here for the Radiant side. So come with me. We'll get a decent amount of farm. Looks like he'll stack up in the jungle and have some stuff for uh, the Bat Rider and or the Luna to retreat to um, once we kind of move out of the laning phase here. Phobos forced to use a defensive orb. We'll destroy that last auto attack. But 
will survive. Come with me now, uh, camping out the regeneration rune down bottom. The bounty will go to Skywrath. Arise will get his bottle here, and uh, mid is, is going pretty well for both sides. Magnus with an obvious advantage, but pretty even across the board. Well, things slowing down a little bit. Go Black, he'll charge down bottom. It'll be on Come With Me, but he's still... Oh, oh no, found his level 2. Pardon me, and that's one of the biggest buffs of uh, Spirit Breaker. This patch is now the Greater Bash does a lot more damage at level 1. It used to be 10% movement speed is damage. Now it's 22. A little bit more of a value point. And you can get a lot more done around the map at these early levels with the shorter cooldown on charge and uh, that extra damage coming out of Bash. So... Go Black, as always, will need to be successful with these ganks. Uh, needs to find farm somewhere, and if he's not killing heroes, that means he needs to retreat to a lane and at least leech some experience. Uh, getting to that level 6 is always a milestone. Nether Strike gives you a lot more solo kill potential, and uh, we'll see how he continues to fare. Now in the mid lane, Scandal still uh, racking up the farm. Bottle crowing pretty effectively here. Has his boots. And how's Dusa looking? Okay, good. She's still racking up the last hits. And this is very similar to last game, where we saw the offlaner just get wrecked by the Medusa. And this time, Ace even has a friend with him. Ogre is leeching some of that experience, soon to be level 4. Actually going 2 points in Ignite, so going for that extra burn damage and the longer slow duration. Fire on fire, so that rider can get in position. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, come with me in trouble. Go Black charges over the tree line, and that'll be a dead Shadow Demon. And Puck will survive, and yeah, that's a great story there, Puck. Now they'll look towards Hani, perhaps. Though not going to be so easy of a kill. Go Black very low on mana. Has no charge, so Hani will be safe for now. But good news so far. Go Black has uh, helped out this bottom lane and the top pretty effectively. We'll see a disruption onto Puck, but up top, Lil. He'll get sandwiched here. Will Puck survive? Looks like it. Lil, not going to be so lucky. Rise will come in. That two seconds, or that extra second of Ignite will help secure the kill. And Arise will come in. Secures the last hit. And now that's good news for the Beastmaster. Going to get his snowball rolling a little bit more quickly. The rune is... What happened to the rune there? The bounty rune is going to be picked up by the Spirit Breaker down bottom. And it looks like... No, I guess it was denied. Scandal. He'll just continue to bottle crow. Happy as a clam to keep filling up his bottle and uh, farming away in lane. Go Black now finds his level 3, going for the 1-1-1. One, one, one. All standard stuff out of the Go Black. And he may go for Come With Me once more down in the bottom lane. He gets pinged out, and here we go. Hiding over the tree line. He'll charge over. Come With Me looking for the disruption. Gets off the defensive on himself. Hani not level 6. And Come With Me, one more auto attack will bring him down. Go Black will chase him as he gets path blocked a bit by his own creeps. And Spirit Breaker proves once more successful. 3-2 to two at the 5 minute mark. Let's take a look at the graph in Virtus Pro Polar. 1500 gold, 400 experience. They are off to the races, good sir. Top lane going very well, mid lane in their favor, and now bottom, not too shabby. Puck and Luna, not a huge farm disparity, only 4 creep kills. And that's an off lane Puck versus a safe lane farming Luna. Once Hani hits level 6, things will be a little bit more difficult in terms of Virtus Pro Polar coming in and dropping the hammer all over the Luna. But until then, they will be susceptible. TP towards the mid lane. It's going to be the Puck. What are you doing, Phobos? Oh, that's what they're doing. RP onto a rise as Scandal sets it up. The orb will fly through. He's forced to jaunt to it. They needed the damage to secure this kill. And seems like a bit of a miscommunication between Phobos and Scandal. As Scandal went for it, and Phobos was just trying to dog it down to the bottom lane. So, missed opportunity, but that's okay. They'll still push the Beastmaster back. He's forced to head to the well, fill up his bottle the old-fashioned way, and that means Scandal will get some more space in the lane. He'll be farming up and further this farm disparity. Well on his way to a great timing on this Blink Dagger, and okay, he'll stop off for the Arcane Boots first, but still, sentiment is the same. His farm not looking too shabby. Grabs himself the... Bounty rune here. Yeah, there he goes. Sucks it in the bottle, and Puck will grab the regeneration. Hooray for Puck. Ooh, phase boots coming out of plenty. Phase boots on Luna. This is one you don't see all too often. As a right clicker, you more often than not almost exclusively see power treads on her, but the phase boots give you a lot of last hitting power in lane. She's hitting pretty damn hard for level 6 hero, compliments of that level 2 aura and all those blades of attack, and of course gives her a lot of chasing power. So this will help Hani get away, I think, the spirit breaker and just his aura and that little sprint that he has now, feeling the need for some extra movement speed. And we'll see how it treats him. But you don't have that ability to toggle the treads and get that little bit of extra mana, a little bit of extra strength when you need it. And we've seen plenty of time when treads come in handy on that front and secure a kill or secure a survival that otherwise would have been impossible. 
All of Gold Black's rotating has proved pretty successful thus far. A nice early earn picked up on him and a little bit of strength, some nice mana. And he'll start stacking up those charges. Also level 5 with 3 points in the charge. He'll soon have that Nether Strike, which makes his ganking efforts that much easier. Puck will also be level 6 soon, which means when the Spirit Breaker charges in, Puck will have a nice tool to try and set up those kills and prevent the easy escape, of course, in that of the Dream Coil. Curious what build Arise is going to go for here. He'll follow suit of the um, the Magnus here. He'll go into the Arcane Boots and a couple of options on the Beastmaster. You can go for the fast Blink Dagger, move around, and just try to set up kills. Your other option is you can go for a pretty fast Aghanim Scepter and just get that uh, Enhanced Primal Roar. We'll see what he wants to do. You don't see mid Beastmaster too often. And there you go, Primal Roar stops Go Black dead in his tracks on top of the tower. The Wild Axes will fly through Go Black. He may just go down here. Hani comes in, Lucid Beam to the face, will secure the kill. Bat Rider flying into Scandal's face, but only level 5. No Flaming Lasso, and Scandal should be Radiance good. He'll get the Invisibility Rune. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Puck, he'll just find a solo kill onto the Shadow Demon. Dream Coil used, and that'll be a kill. So it's a one for one, kind of Radiance across the map here. Shadow Demon attack. for the Spirit Breaker. Pretty even trade, basically a wash. Uh, that's the power of the stuns against the Spirit Breaker. Now we'll see him charge once more Radiant towards the bottom lane. They'll set this up onto Hani. He's level 8, has the ultimate at the ready, but the Invisible Magnus, RP. This will be a rough one for Hani to survive. In comes the Magnus. Oh, Scandal, he misses the skewer. Hani trying to get off the ultimate, but there's the RP. Go Black stuck in the tree line. They won't be able to bring him down, but the silence is there. He falls before the Eclipse can come out. Now arise. He'll TP in, takes a negative urn charge. Now he goes, ah, oh, shit. Why did I TP here? Hani was already dead. He's going to get locked in. Good old-fashioned Warcraft 3 style, and down he goes. Now Rise TPs forward. Go Black. He's found his level 6. There's your Nether Strike. Gets the Bash to follow up. Scandal has a Shockwave in just a couple of seconds. The Urn maybe enough to bring him down, but no. The Defensive Disruption buys him the time he needs. Scandal won't be able to finish him off, and Go Black will pay for it. Can Scandal make it out alive? Has a couple bottle charges, and the Magnus will live. So a little bit of a sloppy exchange from Virtus Pro, but still they come out ahead. And they get the better of it. It's a one for two, and more space created. That whole time, Deuce is just racking up the free farm in the safe lane. And now Hani's had to rotate up top to stop her from chipping into the tower and finding the free farm. Denied. This is the power of the Spirit Breaker. This is exactly what Virtus Pro Polar did last game. Go Black just runs around the map, charging willy nilly, forces TP reactions into towers. And that just creates so much space for Illidan to free farm. He's now the last hit leader by a huge margin. He's 60 and 18 compared to the 40 and 10 of Luna. He's 50% up on her. And now he's up, uh, or he being Hani, is up in the top lane. He'll move into some drums, it looks like here. And uh, he'll find a little bit of farm, trying to try to recover a little bit. But it's, it's a rough life for a Luna so far in this game. Lil, almost level 6, and more kill potential there, and maxing out the Ancient Seal. So just trying to help out the team, buff up the puck, and uh, extend that silence duration out to a meaty 5 seconds. Whew. That does make for pretty good initiation, though, when the Spirit Breaker's charging in. Hit him with a silence, and there's no way you can stun Go Black to stop him from bashing you right in the grill. So I, I, like, I like the idea here, I like the thought process, and a fair bit of synergy. Let's take a look at the graphs here, and uh-oh, up top, never mind, we'll see Initiation Illidan. He'll be the victim of the Eclipse as he goes down, DK Phobos with a coil on three. Honey will break the tether, charge coming in from Go Black, but this is a little scary. I don't know how much he wants to commit here. He will just break off the charge after the initial stun, no nether strike. Now takes a fire blast, takes the Lucent Beam, Wild Axes, Go Black, oh no! It's a dead space count. So that'll make it a two for nil, and that'll end up being a little bit of a feed ski there for uh, the Spirit Breaker. That will secure the Blink Dagger now onto Ace's Bat Rider. And uh, okay, well seven. So this is good news. Fnatic in the right direction here. It was a pretty big lead for Virtus Pro Polar out of the gate, but now it's Fnatic that have the experience edge, and the gold graph is only about a thousand in the favor of the Dyer. Come with me though, he could be in some trouble. Rotation's coming his way. It's a hasted Magnus. And a charge as well as a Medusa. The snake will do half of his hit points. Scandal just hit him with a shockwave. There you go. Down he goes. That's a dead Shadow Demon. Man. Shadow Demon soon to be level 6, but he just can't catch a break. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Fnatic. They're pressing into the tower pretty hard, doing a fair bit of damage. Dire Glyph is still available, so they could try to mount a defense or go for a push of their own. And it looks attack. like they'll choose the latter. They've got a Stone Gaze and an RP Radiant's ready to rock and roll, and they will attack. go for a kill on this uh, Blink Rider <laughs> uh, if he overcommits. But no, top tower will go down, and they didn't glyph it. Oh, man. It's wasted efficiency, boys. 
That's okay, though. No big deal. They'll lose their tower, do about half damage to the bottom tier one. And now Fnatic may look for a kill onto Phobos here. They've got a few heroes rotating up. Arise. Ooh, is he going into just a mech? Yeah, he sure is. Buckler into Headdress. So with the Arcane Boots, he'll have plenty of mana to sustain the increased mana cost of mech. And uh, I like this. It'll put Fnatic in a spot where they can team fight very readily. And their mid-hero, a good one to prioritize uh, the mech as he'll have the farm to handle it. Double damage rune picked up by Scandal. Finds himself a nice 65 gold bounty while he's at it. And that Blink Dagger will be coming out. Uh, they scout him, but it hasn't been revealed as it just gets delivered now. Oh boy. Double damage Blink Magnus at 12 minutes. There's some serious kill potential here. Big stack in the jungle. They'll just be able to shockwave it down. Looks like a triple stack. Some trolls, some centaurs, some wild wings. And this will be a nice bit of farm going the way of Scandal's Magnus. So, Mask of Madness for Hani. First item after the phase boots. Going a very glass cannon -y build here. He's got a big ancient stack to work with. We'll try to stack it up once more, but I'm not sure this one will be successful. Uh, no, it will not. So that's a little unfortunate. But we'll just start laying in the auto attacks. Mask of Madness, this is pretty easy. Two points in the Bouncing Glaive, kind of your bare minimum. This looks like a quadruple stack. Two drakes and two sets of lizards. So this is a huge bout of farm going the way of Hani. This build is really good if you can get away with it. Now, you've got all this movement speed with the phase boots. You've got the Mask of Madness to help you farm. And if they give you enough space in the jungle, it's great. But if they jump on you, it's not so good. Ace, he'll lasso <laughs> Lil back to the safety of the tower as Scandal comes in with the skewer, giving that Bat Rider a juxtaposition of his own taste. Now, Rise getting initiated on his Go Black charges in. Dream Coil comes out on two. They'll go in on to Rise as now the Mystic Flare flies through. A lot of damage on the Ogre. He's still alive. He's one tanky mother, but they'll chase him down. Stone Gaze is on, but Rise, he's looking the other way. He's not going to make the mistake of looking at the snakes, but he'll go down nonetheless. The arrows are just too much. Hani saves the ultimate, does a lot of damage to Go Black. Not enough to bring him down right away, but they still secure the kill. Now, Illidan in the front lines. Rather tanky at this stage in the game, but needs to be a little careful. Scandal coming in. Skewer back on two, right into Illidan. And out, out. Fanatic, they're in trouble. It's a double kill for Scandal. Ace, he's coming back in. He wants vengeance. He has no lasso, but he's just laying down the fire, taking a lot of damage in return. He needs to be damn careful. A lot of low health heroes on the side of the dire DK Phobos. Can he jaunt to the orb in time? No, the poison would have brought him down anyway, and now Scandal just trying to escape the wrath of Ace. Can he live? It's not looking good for Scandal, and Flame Break will take him down in style. So Fnatic get a couple of recovery kills there. They did use a buyback on the Shadow Demon to help make that possible, but Bat Rider ending a big streak and now basically has his Force Staff. Let's look at that recap here. It is still Virtus Pro Polar that come out ahead. A three for four exchange plus the buyback on the side of Fnatic does put things in the favor of Virtus Pro Polar. Wow. What a bolt of explosion that was. And Illidan, he's looking pretty good. Phase Boots, Yasha, Aquila. This is pretty much where he wants to be right now. Level 11 also. Uh, Stone Gaze getting that much more potent. But in comes the Lasso. They'll go right on to the Dusa. But Mana Shield's already been used. Won't be able to bring him down. Dream Coil will be a complete whiff. Charge flying through. The Axes will bring down Illidan. Nicely done, but it will cost him their Bat Rider as Phobos finishes him off to the side. Go Black coming in. Nether Strike on to come with me. Gets another Bash. But there's the Primal Roar. Stops him dead in his tracks. Shockwave almost brings him down. Mystic Flare to boot, but Scandal, oh no, he misses the skewer. They still secure the kill, but Scandal, you slippery snake. Oh, he whiffed it. That's a time when it didn't punish him too much, and still they lose their Dusa, but it's a one for two. Consistently finding these, these good exchanges, though. Vert is pro polar. A little sloppy with some of those abilities. A missed Dream Coil there, a missed skewer, but... What are you going to do? You can't win them all. You miss 100% of Dream Coils Dyer's you don't take, so can't fault attack. Phobos too much. Well, Blink Dagger now out on the puck, and the Fairy Dragon will also find his level 11 following that fight, so that's good news. But look at the recovery that Hani's made. He'll now find a Yasha, so continuing with this very hard farming build, Radiant's and he simply just hasn't been punished. He's 2-1-4, and four, had a little bit of a rough time in the safe lane, but between those Ancients and that successful team fight for him, meaning he didn't die and helped set up some of the kills, Hani's made a great recovery. Now he's number one on net worth. He, he will start to become a force to be reckoned with. Still not the end of the world. Virtus Pro have plenty of tools to deal with them, especially before that BKB comes out. But hell, even after the BKB comes out, they've got a lot of magic piercing ultimates that um, maybe this isn't even a, a BKB kind of a game. Maybe it's more of a Lincoln's kind of game for Hani with all this single target. Dyer's so this is uh, going to be a rough game for attack. the Luna regardless. Positioning will be the name of the game and perhaps part of the reason why he's invested in all these movement speed items with the phase boots on. He's, he's a race car. He's cruising close to the max. 
And we'll see how it works out. 13 to 10, 17 minutes in. Still a pretty even game, but Virtus Pro Polar. They've got the momentum, at least for now. Four staff almost out on Scandal. Bat Rider soon to have his. Uh, pulling up some gold here, but very close to it. Yeah, he's also found his level 11. All right, so things slowing down a little bit, but not for long. Smoke rotation from Virtus Pro Polar. They'll be cruising down towards the bottom lane. Who's their target? They don't see the Bat Rider quite yet. They know that they're around, but don't have vision to set up a charge. And that will quell their bit of pressure for now. Instead, they'll look towards the mid lane. They've got all their ultimates ready to rock and roll. Blink RP at the helm of Scandal. And they'll see Hani. He has an Eclipse also, sitting level 12. It is level 2, but ooh, they'll bump right into the Bat Rider. Or is it the other way around? Ace grabs Scandal with a lasso, but there's just no follow-up. Uh, oh, it's a wasted Eclipse from Hani. It does nothing. VP Polar, they'll mount the escape, and now Fnatic, they need to be careful. I don't think they want to take this one. They'll find Go Black in the trees here, but he'll have a charge. He'll be able to make it out to safety, at least for now. Has a couple wand charges. Won't be enough. DK Phobos comes in. Coil on three, but where's the follow-up? There's a miscommunication. Oh, Scandal a little late to the party. Gets off the RP. Mystic Flare to follow up. The defensive disruption coming in handy there. Deucey gets the kill onto the Ogre. The Stone Gaze doing a lot of work. They'll find the kill on to come with me. And now it's Fnatic on the back foot. It's a two for two so far, but soon to change. Puck will go down. That'll give them the advantage for now. Illidan, he's going man mode, but can he actually handle this? He has his phase boots, wants to chase down a rise. Can't do it. Now he's on the back foot. Ace doing a lot of damage to him. Lil doing everything he can to buy some space for his friend, but it just isn't enough. And now it looks like Fnatic regaining that lost momentum. Lil will go down. And I think this charge from Glow Black, Glo Go Black will most definitely be canceled. Yeah, that's going to be the smart play there. Let's take a look at the recap. And ooh, a two for five. Ouch. Looking at the graphs now, Fnatic, they're starting to take this game. It's looking good. The Virtus Pro Polar strategy may be getting a bit hyper aggressive. Deuce has taken too many tumbles in this last fight. And. Even though she was in a good spot moments ago, she's not really in fighting form quite yet. Yasha and Perseverance, two items that are not just not that great in terms of your ability to fight. She needs that Lincolns before she can really just get up into these team fights and go man mode as she was trying to do there. Scandal will just go back to some neutrals, still looking to get up his four staff, but the weirdest part about that fight was just Virtus Pro Polar not being on the same page. Puck had a beautiful coil to set it up, and it seemed they were caught in between, do we want to go in or do we want to escape? And uh, they kind of got caught somewhere in between. There were some tweeners there. And, of course, it did cost them. Beastmaster has been pretty on point with these ultimates, stopping Scandal dead in his tracks on top of that. Fnatic have been continuing to utilize the Ancients. Hani's farm getting better and better by the minute. And uh, maybe looking for a Manta style coming out next. Has the Yasha 2800 gold. And man, look at this team support. Hani just finding stack after stack. And that net worth is jumping up towards the top, even without a hand of Midas. That Mask of Madness doing more than enough to secure him some solid farm. Go Black. His momentum has slowed down quite a bit. 1 6 and 10. E. Ooh, this is scary. Spirit Breaker, he's very momentum-based. And once he starts attack. to lose that momentum, where do you go? You got to put a little bit of uh, extra gasoline in that lantern there. His torch is burning low. And Go Black, he's kind of a... He's a Spirit Breaker without a home right now. He's just trying to figure out what he can do, where he can go, where can he set up kills. Medusa looking to find some more farm as well. I think Virtus Pro Polar have realized the error of their ways. I just want to slow the momentum down a little bit. Get some more core farm up on the Dusa, and just stop feeding away unnecessary deaths. Take a good team fight when Fnatic want to push up when they're grouped up. Put some wards around the Roche pit Dyer's and catch them when they go in. And they will have attack. a decent ward down in this general vicinity. They'll see if they can walk into or when they walk into the Roche pit rather, and um, they will actually angle on, on top Dyer's of the, the high ground. The Dusa attack. moves into the Ancients. They're just staying grouped up here. They're a little bit scared, but. BKB now picked up on Hani. Now, we talked about quite a few things that Virtus Pro Polar have that will cut through Magic Immunity, the Stone Gaze. Uh, you've got your RP, and of course, you've got your Spirit Breaker. He's all physical, so actually, Charge of Darkness you can't use on uh, the, the Magic Immune targets, but Nether Strike certainly so. So, still a good pickup for Hani, though. We'll keep him safe from the Dream Coil, at least for now, until Puck grabs himself uh, an Aghanim Scepter, if that's the route. He wants to go. Puck's farm has actually not been that great either. He had a good time to Blink Dagger, and 
five, two, and six. You'd almost Radiance expect them to have a little more farm than this, but no item progression following that gap closer. Ogre finds his level 11. That's always a big deal. The multicast buff. Now 50% chance. You got a coin flip to get a 2x. And of course, adding some 3x to the mix. This is where things get a little scary. No, nope. or only one point in Bloodlust, but they're really going to buff up this Hani. And he's already hitting fast and hitting hard. And with the Bloodlust on top of the Mask of Madness, Dyer's out anticipating the Glyph. They'll Dyer's use it at the very last second here. Attack. And Hani should be the one to grab the last hit. Yeah, times Dyer's it perfectly. Tower and has using this, the Hawk to scout things out. It'll get picked off by the Creeps. But Fnatic, they're all grouped up. They seem hungry for a team fight. There's a mech to no mech advantage, Dyer's which will give them a small edge. Attack. And now with this fresh BKB, they'll feel pretty safe putting Hani in the front lines. And seeing what they can get away with. They'll pressure this tier 2 tower. The cliff has, of course, cooled down. So BP Polar trying to make a hold is, is looking a little bit different. Oh, oh, here we go. Charge in onto Hani. But will they have something to deal with it? Yeah, looks like it will be canceled. Go Black seeing his positioning. Doesn't want to go for it. We'll play this very careful. There's a Hawk on the high ground here, giving them some great vision, helping to deal with the Spirit Breaker. And, yeah, that flying vision, man, really coming in handy. Let's take a look at the Radiant sign and look at all the vision this bird gives. This is one this is one stellar bird. That's one way to deal with the Spirit Breaker, that's for sure. Blessings Mask of Madness picked up on the Bat Rider. Order. So, Blink Dagger for staff. Now some movement speed so we can really pull people into a bad position. I like it. Gold Graph just jumping in the favor of Fnatic. 4,000 gold, 7,500 experience. They're in great shape. They're just cruising on up, and they're working the map. Just a lot more efficiency. Hani already with 1,800 gold. He's just picked up his BKB. Illidan, how's he looking? Soon to have the Lincolns. Ultimate Orb now up, working on the recipe, and only a couple Radiant's hundred gold away. Meanwhile, Fnatic grouped up in the mid, perhaps looking to take out another tower. They're just find, trying to find the right angle of attack. But Hani instead, he'll just go back to the Ancients here. Maybe can he clear them out before they respawn, get a nice triple? It's a race against the clock. Hani's going to be able to do it. There you go. Radiance bottom so a nice triple stack of ancients attack. here, and some Drakes Illusion. will respawn, and he'll save them from later. Very nicely done. Great efficiency coming out of Fnatic just across the board. Ooh, are we going to see some initiation here? No. Oh, the illusion! It's a wasted lasso. That is a value illusion right there. And Hani not going for the Manta. Instead, just looking for a Sanjin Yasha, getting some more good, valuable HP items, tanking up a little bit, and getting kind of the best of both worlds. Just needs to survive it. Here we go. Initiation. Go Black charging in. Arise. He's skewered back. That'll be the end of the Beastmaster. Get things started. But Hani gets off the ultimate from the high ground, enough to bring down Go Black. Scandal. He's taking a lot of damage as well. Hani with one more Lucid Beam to the face. It'll be a one for two to get it started. Now the rest of the fight will transpire in favor of Fnatic, as it is Virtus Pro Polar that are on the defensive. Stone Gaze still available, trying to hold it for that perfect timing. Dream Coils come out. There's your Stone Gaze. They're going to look at her. Hani will get petrified and turned to stone, but there's just no follow-up damage. Now, the Blast out onto Lil. Phobos comes in. They see Ace off to the side. He gets silenced up, but not enough to save the Skywrath Mage. Illidan on the run. He'll be able to live, but Fnatic take another great team fight. A one for three, and they'll be rewarded with a Tier 1 tower. They don't even bother to glyph it. And that's another huge gold rush going the way of our Radiant side. Dyer's Glyph will be available for this Tier 2 attack. tower, but even if they Dyer's Glyph it, I think Fnatic can uh, possibly take it down. No RP available, no Stone Gaze. So how did Virtus Pro Polar go about trying to mount a defense here? Even the Aura from Luna helping out so much. The Bloodlust. Hani's just a machine. And things still just going up, Dyer's up, up, and up. For the Radiant side, Dyer's that's another tower, tower kill for Hani. He's huge. That Bloodlust makes him nice and big. 2,400 gold now on the Luna, who just picked up a Sanjin Yasha before that fight. They'll look towards the Roche pit. It does get pinged out by the Dyer. They've got a ward here on the high ground, so they see him walk right into the pit. The charge from Spirit Breaker Radiant's flying through on to come with me. Attack. And Fnatic will back Radiant's it on up. They've got the uh, little Hawk there on the high ground. And Bat Rider camping it out. And they'll just Shut slow push. siege the Roche. They're still feeling pretty safe about this fight. There's no RP. Also no Eclipse, but that's uh, less of an important ability compared to the RP. Uh, and the strategy of Virtus Pro Polar trying to high ground Go Black there. Cheeky play from Ace, but he will uh, cancel it just in the nick of time. Scandal misses the skewer back. The defensive disruption coming in handy as the RP comes out. It refreshes just in time, but it will cost Magnus his life. Mystic Flare split between a few heroes. Not enough to secure a kill. Now they'll Delta split his puck. Doesn't know which way to go. Hani will head for the hills. Will survive. Go Black. 
go, Black. What am I talking about? Oh, on the other side, Arise will maybe go down to the puck. He's moving in the tree line. He's juking. He's jiving. But they'll get the vision they need, and that'll be the end of it. So, end of the day, Virtus Pro Polar do take a pretty decent team fight there, and it will go back in their favor just a little bit. It's a one for two, but more importantly, almost, they stop the Roshan from coming out in favor of the Radiant. Now, come with me. Uh oh What are you doing here, good sir? He'll get charged. He'll get negative earned, and he'll go down. Now, this tier one tower taking some damage, but he'll be on the defensive. There is an Eclipse available now for Hani as they'll press forward. A lot of creeps nearby, but the Bloodlust, you're not running away from this Luna. Mask of Madness, Bloodlust, damn, is she speedy. Unless you're Go Black. He's going at uh, uh, lightning speed here as he charges towards the top lane. So what a back and forth game we've got on our hands here, folks. Fnatic really want this one, and that'll put a dent in their golden experience lead. But they are uh, they are not out of the clear quite yet. Hani looking for perhaps a solo Eclipse opportunity. And ooh, maybe he can find it on Illidan. Some ogres will come in to get in his way. Scandal thinking about a blink skewer, but won't go for it this time. And things will settle down. So Illidan, he's got his Lincolns, and following that fight, he'll have about 2,000 gold in the bank. So he's doing pretty well for himself. Bat Rider, oh, he'll get charged. But will they be able to do much? Yule Scepter picked up by the Ogre. Another great tool to stop the Spirit Breaker dead in his tracks. I love it. It's good stuff. And if you can catch the Magnus, of course, that recent change, uh, stopping the Blink Dagger. So good stuff. Puck has a Yule's of his own. But I think a smart pickup on the Ogre, just kind of in general. Uh, he'll throw the Ignite over the way of Illidan, but that'll be the end of his Lincolns. Looking for the right opening here. Phobos, almost left behind, will make it back. Now Ace, he goes in, grabs Illidan with the Lasso Hani, right there with the Eclipse, and they'll be able to bring down this Medusa, and she will be the first to fall. Scandal caught inside of the Yules, that'll stop him dead in his tracks, the Primal Roar as he tries to skewer away. You saw him running on the treadmill, and that'll be the end of him. Buyback from Dusa. Virtus Pro Polar scared of losing the high ground, and that is a very premature buyback, I think is the right way to say it. That is a huge net worth change now in favor of Fnatic following that. And uh, maybe they'll try to contest Roshai. I think Illidan pulled the trigger just a bit too early there. I think Fnatic will see that and go, <laughs> Now we go to Rosh. Uh, knowing that the Magnus is dead, they don't really know if he has buyback or not. Phobos will scout it out. And in comes the charge on to come with me. They'll have Batrider on the high ground to scout it out, but charge will get canceled. They just simply can't contest it. Come with me, showing off his blink dagger. Goes to the high ground. Roche will fall. They'll catch Phobos. He'll be stuck inside of the uh, disruption, and yeah, that's going to be the end of him. So Luna gets the Aegis of the Immortal. Shadow Demon finds a kill on the puck. And now, very quickly, things are getting out of control in favor of Fnatic. Look at this graph. It's just jumping in their favor. <laughs> Pardon me. Now with an Aegis of the Immortal. In the inventory of Hani, he'll move towards a butterfly. Fortified. Eagle Song already in tow. This Luna, she is just fat with a PH. Lil' Kim style, she's getting huge. Ogre McGee, Bloodstone, or that's not Ogre. Dyer's Jesus, they're both fat. That's my bad. Attack. Beastmaster moving towards Radiant's an Aghanim Scepter. That's good news there. Bottom Dyer's tier two tower falls. Tower Only one outer fallen. tower remaining for VP Polar. And Fnatic may just try to press their luck on the high ground. Glyph is cooling down in a couple of seconds. This won't be an easy push, but uh, they may just try to Dyer's go for it, force a reaction back. And even if you can force out just a couple of TPs here, that stops them from farming. A little bit of wasted gold, and yeah, they'll be happy to retreat following that. So Hani will sit back, farm up his butterfly, and by that I mean he'll wait for it to be delivered from his Doomling. 30 minutes in, he's got a full butterfly now to go with his SNY and BKB. It's Luna. Oh, what a monster. Come with me. Initiated on by Go Black. Takes another strike. Negative Urn. Come with me. We'll get Shockwave from the high ground. Skewer down. Jukes it. He's jiving. He will fall, but still buys himself some time. The team will have uh, some opportunity to get into position. Go Black will try to charge away, but there's the Yules. They save it for the perfect timing. Now they'll go in on Go Black. Lucid Beam will be enough to bring him down. Ace goes a little too aggressive. Caught inside of the Dream Coil. It'll be enough to finish him off. Now Ace, or pardon me, Arise off to the side. He gets initiated on by Puckman. Hani comes in with the ultimate, doing a lot of damage. It'll secure the kill on the Medusa Magnus and the Skywrath Mage. Down goes the Puck, the ultra kill for Hani. Oh, no, Virtus Pro Polar. It's a full five-man wipe. And Fnatic. They are going to take this by brute force. Two for five. Let's take a look at the buyback scenario. And oh, it's looking pretty grim. One, two, three, four, five. All on cooldown. This could be Elena Rax. And this could be moments from GG. 
Fnatic, Dyer's four protect, one. The ogre buff, blood lusted Dyer's him up, doing it shaman style. Hani is a beast. He is, he is a beast. He's a machine, he's wrecking it. That'll be a tier three tower, Dyer's Glyph's already come out. And this will be a mid lane of Rax. They may just go bottom. See Indusa in the grave that much longer. Some heroes coming up soon, but they're still pretty eager to take a team fight. Hani's just so big, still with the Aegis in tow. Why the hell not? There's no glyph, and at the very least, get the tier three tower. Do you stick around for the barracks is another question, but the bouncy glaives, they'll just truck these structures. Hani with now 5,000 gold sitting in his wallet. That's two lanes of racks down in Virtus Pro Polar. They've probably got one good team fight left in them. And that'll be it. Look at that net worth gap now. This Luna is just nearly doubling the Medusa. That is, I think, suffice it to say, a pretty scary statistics. 14,000 gold, 14,000 experience in the favor of Fnatic. They'll rotate up top, it seems. They ping out the Skywrath Mage, and uh-oh, Lil, you could be in some trouble. Meanwhile, in the mid, speaking of trouble, Arise forced to use his ultimate defensively as Goblack comes in to initiate. And Fnatic will now make the rotation. And here we go. The outer tower remaining. They'll try to go for it as Ace. He gets charged up, but the Yules comes out once more. Defensive disruption on the Bat Rider buys him some time, and he'll be able to survive. Now they go in onto the Luna. BKB at the ready. Hani still with the Aegis of the Immortal. He'll be the first to go down, but he's coming right back up. Fnatic still eager to take this fight. 15 seconds on Eclipse. That's all the time they need. Lincoln's has been broken. Has come with me. Presses forward. Isolates the Magnus. No RP. At least not an easy one right now. Ace uses the lasso. Finishes off the Spirit Breaker. Illidane just getting clicked down by Hani. He attacks too damn fast. Now the Flame Break connects on two. Knocks him out of the base. It'll be the end of the Sky Wrath. Cost Batrider his life, but it's nearly a full team wipe. There's only one survivor. It's DK Phobos. He's AFK in the jungle. Playing with his toy cars. Sipping on his juice box. And... He'll be a sad fairy dragon. It's a Dyer's one for four trade. They also lose the Aegis, but it was soon to expire. Actually, it's a two for four. Uh, no radiant buyback is just uh, respawn. I don't, I, well, yeah. Anyway, now they'll move into the base. Buyback status comparable to how it was, and VP Polar, this is the end of him. Maybe Puck can make the play of all plays. Dyer's he comes in, does a little bit of chip damage, but whoa, 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 look at all the, the bouncy glaives. Yules after Yules, after Blink, Dyer's after phase shift. Can attack. they bring him down to earn? And it won't tick fast enough. He'll still blink, but this will be Mega Creeps. Phobos will finally Dyer's be able to hop into the well. Their barracks have gone down, and their Tier Dyer's 4 towers tower will be in some big trouble. Polar won't tap out quite yet. They're fighters till the bitter end. They'll do what they can. They'll get a kill on Come With Me, but it's a minor consolation. TP coming forward. It is Lil TPing out of his own base. They want Rise. He gets off the Yules. That buys him a little bit of time, but Go Black's there. Hits him with the Lantern, and it'll be the end of McGee as he comes back down to planet Earth. One of the Tier 4 towers have fallen, and Fnatic have essentially secured the win. This is nigh unthrowable at this point. 20,000 gold, 15,000 experience. They'll desperately hang on to save their base from the wrath of the Mega Creeps. Go Black, he still wants one more race car excursion. He wants Hani. That's a second butterfly! Whoa, boy! With a double damage rune. Go Black, I don't think you want to do this, man. You don't want, you don't want to be here. Oh, man, Hani. He's going to chase him down. He's a speedy mother. Come on, honey. You can do it. Uses the flutter. He's going to chase him down. Go Black's going to get juiced. He's going to get carved up like a Thanksgiving turkey. That's a gem on the ground, but honey just doesn't care. Now he wants to go in for more. He's still hungry. He needs some food to feed his mount. Nova. Oh, Go Black running to his death. Virtus Pro Polar in shambles. And Fnatic was securing a win here. They will be one step further away from relegation towards the end of this Star Ladder Season 10 group stage. Now a Mask of Madness out on the Medusa, just trying to do any damage she can. McGee grabs himself a Blink Dagger, and he'll head to that Tier 1 tower in the mid lane. BP Polar only killed a single tower this game, the Tier 1 in the bottom Dyer's lane. What a sad story. No Glyph available for the Dire side. They'll fallen. go straight for the throne. Or will they? Here we go, Hani. Charging on in there. Use your Dyer's double Aegis butterfly. He'll use his attack. ultimate, but he makes a mistake of looking at Dusa. He'll get turned to stone, but they can't even hurt him. Look at the evasion. Hani, he's, he's getting tickled. The kittens, oh, they feel nice on my skin. It's like when somebody rubs a feather above your eyebrows. Hani, he's still alive. He's dropping the hammer on Virtus Pro, and Dyer's that's the GG. The throne will fall, and Fnatic off to a... Or, after a very rocky start with a huge turnaround and just uh, wreck Virtus Pro Polar. I don't think there's any other more tactful way to say it. It was just a 
a barrel of fun. And uh, they protected their honey. They stacked up the ancients. They stacked up the jungle. And 16, 1, and 12 on the double butterfly Luna. Oh, man. Well, that wraps up our coverage for this game, guys. I'm Zyori. Give me a follow on Twitter, at TV. if you enjoyed the cast. Of course, at Beyond the Summit as well, to stay up to, uh, stay up to date with all things happening in the studio. We'll be back after a break for our one final game today, and that is Virtus Pro Polar versus Team Cleave.